Look at that, flowing in the breeze. Aren't they just beautiful? Woven Willows, I like when Willows. Picked these up know, a few weeks ago at Home Depot. I ended up grabbing a whole bunch from them to doing some planters. I have someone who has requested some planters from me that would give off a calm, cottagey, but fun vibe. I think the word they used was Martha's Vineyard. And I was like, okay, cottage, got it. I'm going to be putting together some estate planters to put on their front porch. I love these Willows. I'm going to have a lot of phone thieves that I'd bring you all along. That's it, no objective today, just tossing together a planter and talking about some plants. I'm sorry, pardon the fan, I can't turn it off. The black flies, the tiny little things, the bite, and they hurt, it's they're everywhere right now. If you turn the fan off, you just get eaten alive by them, so that's gonna make some noise. I believe these are 20 inch, just square white planters. These were cheap. I got these from Home Depot for like 40 bucks. The wood ones do look a little bit nicer, but really, I can't tell much of a difference, and these are a solid 100 to 150 bucks cheaper than actual wood ones. They could use some work. There's some chippage on them. That's nothing you can't fix up with a little bit of paint. Y'all know I'm gonna be planting these up so heavy. None of that's going to matter. Didn't have drainage in the bottom, but went through, popped some holes in there. They already had the pre, like kind of pre-drilled holes. So that makes it pretty easy. Yeah, see if they have the spot where you drill the holes for drainage. Classic Home and Gardens brand. They're from Home Depot. That's the point there, you get it. I have really been looking forward to putting these containers together. It's something different, something more formal. There's only so much you can get from the nurseries. Couldn't find everything I wanted. No. All-purpose potting mix. It's gonna take a lot of potting mix to get these things filled up. These containers are pretty big. Kind of clumpy. This hasn't been long off the pallet, so need to go through and break up some chunks and they get compressed when they've been sitting around with all the other bags piled on top of them and wrapped up in that plastic, but otherwise I think, yeah, this is fine. Just standard potting mix. All right, we'll come in here with the centerpiece. It's gonna be that willow. I think that height is just about right. Could maybe be a little bit higher. I don't know though. I wanna make sure there's enough of a rim there that's easy to soak these planters with water. Uh, yeah, that should be just fine, just like that. Something I enjoy about working with a square planter is I don't feel as obligated to make sure that the plant is dead set in the middle of the container. It makes just as much sense for it to be in the middle of the pot, but for some reason I feel like when you're working with a square, it's going to be flat up against a wall. It just seems more reasonable to the eye to not have the plant in the very middle, but also up against the back since you'll have things in the... Do you know what I'm talking... Is it just... You know what I mean? I had thought about trying to center them. I mocked these up before I started filming, played around with some different options. And the way it's going to have to work in order to fit these giant hydrangeas in here, well, giant root ball hydrangeas, the tops of them are fairly small. This works out best that the willow stays in the back in order for these to fit in here properly and have enough room. That needs to be up a lot higher. That's right, I scooped the soil out and piled it up around the willow. Duh, whoops. There we go. Try and get a few more handfuls in there. Raise things up for the rest of the plants that aren't as tall. This is also the best time. I mean, can you see what I'm doing back here? start filling in the back of that root ball. It's so much easier to get that soil up into these corners now as opposed to later on when there are plants in here. Okay, so oh. as I was saying, the hydrangeas have very big root balls on them. So it just works out better to have this willow in the back instead of in the center of the container. Speaking of the hydrangea, it's just freaking stunning. Don't you love the color on these? These were called River blue. And a lot of squeezing to make this work. Careful, squeezing. That third one, need to rotate it. That the height matches up on everything here. I think that these could use some filler. I wanted to get some sort of flowy carex, a beautiful green grass to go in here. But I just couldn't find any at the nurseries. It's a perennial, they're like 30 bucks. The carex grasses sometimes grow more slowly. And that isn't quite what I was looking to do with these containers, so went with these beautiful hostas. It's called Rainforest. Every single leaf has a different variegation on it, different shades of green. It reminds me a lot more of a pothos than of a hosta. That's not a pothos, it's definitely a hosta. Correction, the name on this hosta is Rainforest Sunrise, not just Rainforest, Rainforest Sunrise. It's a really nice color to it. And of course, trailers, helichrysum. This is the white licorice, has that beautiful silvery, dainty foliage on it. It's a really great, fuzzy texture, and I think that there's just going to be barely enough room to fit those in there. I don't know, what do you think? Should probably put another one in over here, don't you think? There's room for one on the other side. We can make room for one over here, too. 
Yeah, that looks good. That's perfect. Absolutely beautiful. I love the way these came out. There are lots of other variations and things that could have been done to play around with the color combos and whatnots, but I went with what was available at the nurseries that I was at. Like I said, I think a grass of some kind, a dwarf carex, something like that, something with a nice graceful habit would have been beautiful in these corners. But I really do like these Rainforest Sunrise Hosta. The Rainforest Sunrise Hosta, I believe this was a Hosta of the Year in 2012, 2013. They have a decent slug resistance. They've been popular because of that. These go eight inches high, 16 inches wide, hardy all the way down to zone four. I don't love the color change that you have with the leaves in here and they come out that nice golden color and then they age out to more of a lime green with various patterns of dark green on the outside of the leaves. The hydrangeas that are in here, well, I think they might be a floral hydrangea. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I guess I should explain. Uh, these hydrangeas were just labeled as river blue. And when I looked those up online, really haven't found much information about them, unfortunately. There's a whole entire river series of hydrangeas that are all labeled as hardy like nine and up. So that's what makes me think that it's a, probably just one of those macrophyllas that's meant for the floral industry or for the gift giving industry, which makes some sense. This time of year, it's Mother's Day. They were relatively inexpensive. They were bountiful. I mean, they just had racks and racks of them at the nurseries. The person who this is for, they picked those out and uh, it'll just have to do it. Potentially come July, somewhere in there, these may fizzle out and be done. The macrophile is, unless they're the new and improved varieties, they only bloom on old wood. So it's not likely that they're going to put up new growth and keep flowering, but again, I don't really know because I can't find much information about them. Lots of other great options for the front here. I think that some verbena would be really pretty. One of the taller ones, right? Not one of the trailers, but one of the more bushy ones. Hydrangea-wise, the Game Changer Hydrangeas, they're very airy. The petals on the flowers are much, much larger. They're hardy all the way down to zone five. They flower profusely. Any hydrangea that's just not gonna get very big should work fine in here. So some time and research into the varieties that somebody may want that blooms on old and new growth. That would probably be a better alternative, but again, who knows? I don't know, just need to give this time and see what those decide to do. They may be popped out and replaced with something midsummer. We'll have to wait and see. The willows are thirsty. They are a very thirsty plant. I watered these in with some root and grow just to help speed up the process of getting them established in these containers. The sooner they get some roots out, the less they're going to be so fussy about water because the containers there were just so small. They had really rooted into those. Having a better root system is just going to mean less maintenance. Get them established in the containers won't be as difficult to take care of. They're going to go up on drips. So that's going to make a big difference. I believe these are hardy to zone four or three, minus 30. The rainforest, sunrise hostas, those are a zone four. Trailers, those are annuals. And the hydrangeas, again, I don't know. The only thing I can find is on the river series and it says that it's a nine and up, meaning it's one of the annual or floral type hydrangeas. I did find one website that was talking about like how to care for your hydrangeas that you've been given as a gift. And these were mentioned said just to plant them out in the landscape, but that could have just been a blog where somebody was writing about the common ones people were asking about that they had received for Mother's Day. Ah, there's a mix of perennials and annuals in here. The hostas and the willows, those are good here in zone seven. These Harlequin style braided willows or just willows in general, they're going to want a good amount of sun. Since they're in containers and it gets very warm here during the summer, I am okay with these getting afternoon shade, which would be very beneficial to the hydrangeas in the front. They're going to want afternoon shade. So the location that these are going in is going to be perfect for them. They're going to get sun all morning long until about one to two in the afternoon. Then there's gonna be filtered light for a couple of hours and then shade throughout the rest of the day. And these are trees, right? So these are only gonna be good in these containers for a few years. Did you get wet? You got wet turbo? Okay, that was, didn't know you're gonna have that all over your face. Look at, look at these beautiful planters and got slobber face over here. Upkeep on the willows fairly minimal and really hot climates. Again, afternoon shade if you have them in a container. Otherwise, it's a willow. The main thing is to not let them dry out. Keep the soil consistently moist. They wilt as soon as they're thirsty. The second they're thirsty, they let you know. Yeah, these got a heavy watering last night and they're already throwing a fit and saying, hey, give me more. So I'm gonna give these a good watering here in a minute as soon as I turn the camera off. It's good to keep the tops of these trimmed and trained. You can let them go out a couple feet, cut them back, go out a couple feet, cut them back. And then over time, as you do that, that's going to thicken out these stems too. And eventually these stems, the leads, really these are the branches from the willow, they start to thicken out and they take on an even cooler appearance to them. Eventually you end up with what looks like a willow lollipop. 
that's hanging out on top of a woven stem, a stem that starts to close up because all that wood gets thicker and grows together. You do need to come through and prune off, or just pick off really, all these little pieces that come out from those branches to keep things nice and open on the inside. If you don't, you're basically just going to end up with a willow bush with a big hollow middle that's eventually probably going to rot up. It's fun and easy to go in here and just snap these things right off to get them cleaned up. All those little growths just pop right off of there. Real easy to take those off. Doesn't take long at all. I love how these came out. They have a very calm and peaceful, tranquil vibe to them. Something about the blue and the greens and everything together. Serene and lush. The hostas add so much lushness, don't they? That green. It's just the perfect shade of green. Again, I do wish it was a grass, but oh well. Could also, if I could find some, some switchgrass in the back, something with some nice straight growth on it. Might look kind of cool. I don't know. I don't. I think that this is enough. There's more than enough in these containers. Finding two of these that were identical was very tricky. And, well, I didn't pull it off. <laughs> you can tell. There's some differences between the two. This one's more thin, a little bit more short. This one is, I know it doesn't look like it, but it is straight. It's straight at the bottom, and then it starts to curve some up there. I've been messing with it and realized that I think it's just an optical illusion that that one on the right has a curve to it. Beautiful woven willows and there's some colorful flowers. What's not to love? Absolutely love these containers. Can't wait to see what they do come midsummer when I come in to check on them. Comment down below, say hi, what's going on in your garden? Any experience with the River Blue hydrangeas, let us know if they've been perennial for you or if they've been a good repeat bloomer for you. I think that's the more important part here. <laughs> they're gonna wanna know if they're going to keep blooming. I said, I don't know. We just have to wait and find out. There are ones that would repeat bloom but those weren't the ones they wanted. And the price was a lot higher. Like I said, these were out with all the Mother's Day things. They were relatively inexpensive for what they were. And also a good size. If I were to use, I should have said this before, I know I was wrapping things up, but I'll just go ahead and make this one last point. If I were to use a different hydrangea, I would want to make sure it's one to do the stays very small. And if not, you know, maybe something that maxes out around 24 inches, just do one. Just one, not three. It's not likely we're gonna find three of the repeat blooming macrophyllas that stay very small to work in these containers. I don't really see that happening, but maybe, I don't know. I don't know every variety that's out there. I just know a lot of the repeat blooming macrophyllas do get fairly large for containers like this if you were to wanna have three of them. I don't think it would work out that well. We wouldn't end up even being able to see the beautiful woven pattern on those willows. These look so good. I like them so much. I doubled up on everything. I'm gonna be making a couple of these to go on my front porch too because they're just so beautiful. I like the colors and the way everything plays together so much. Fuzzy licorice trailer, the beautiful white estate planters. These look good. So many different ways you could use these. Cottage garden, formal garden, just casual garden. These look nice, great plants good combination. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.